Assalamu alaikum. Dear learners, I hope you are fine and are in great health. In today's video, I am going to explain an unsupervised learning technique known as K-means clustering and will implement it on a colored image to achieve segmentation. So uh, let's start. One of the main objective of machine learning techniques is to segment or divide the data into separate categories. This separation may be based on any suitable parameter. For example, you may want to divide all the students in the class into two groups based on height and weight. Obviously, every student is going to be assigned one of the two groups. But if you have no idea on how to form a group, that is what values of height and weight shall be chosen to define a group, then unsupervised learning techniques can help you out and divide the data nicely into two groups based on closeness of data. In the same way, color images may also be segmented into regions if there are distinct colored objects present in the image. I'll show you how you can achieve this segmentation in MATLAB in a bit. So let us first understand how K-means clustering algorithm works and then we will move on to its implementation on a colored image. I'm going to explain k-means clustering through an example of two-dimensional feature space. That is, I'm going to use two features to identify and cluster the objects. So one of the axes is going to represent one feature that is attribute one and the other one attribute two. Just as in the example, I said that we are going to divide students based on weight and height. So there were two features of every students that we were counting. So based on these two attributes, every data point will lie somewhere on this feature space. So let's suppose that there are certain data points in this feature space shown by gray dots. And we can clearly see that there are two clusters. One is labeled as cluster one and the other one is labeled as cluster two. But how you can automatically extract that there are two clusters and which element or which data point belongs to which cluster. K-means clustering is going to help. So to implement this algorithm, the very first step is to choose the number of clusters, that is K. And once you have chosen the number of clusters, every cluster is going to have a centroid. But initially, we don't know that where the clusters are, so we cannot be certain that where the centroids are. Therefore, we have to choose the centroids randomly. So this is the first step. And we have chosen, for example, two centroids, which are shown by these triangles, blue and green. Once you are done with this, move on to the next step. The second step is to assign all data points to the cluster with closest centroid. So you have to calculate the distance from every data point to both of the centroids and to whichever centroid that data point is closest, you will assign that data point to that cluster. And to, and to mathematically do it, you can draw a straight line joining the two centroids, which is shown over here as black dash line. And you can draw a normal line that will bisect this black line, which is shown by this red dashed line. All the points which are above the red dashed line are nearer to the blue triangle, whereas all the data points which are below the red dashed line are nearer to the green triangle. So automatically you are going to assign all the dots which are above the red line to the blue class and all the points which are below the red line to the green class. So we are done with the second step. Now we should move to the third step. Third step is to recalculate the centroids based on assignments of data points. So now you have the blue data points. You can use all the blue data points and calculate the centroids for these data points. Similarly, you can do this for green data points as well. So if you calculate the centroid once again, the new centroid will be somewhere over here. And for the green class, the new centroid will be somewhere over here. After this, we have to move back to the step two. That is, we are going to assign the data points to the cluster or to the centroid, which is closest to it. So once again, we are going to draw a black line between the two centroids then a midpoint normal, which is shown by this red dashed line. And all the points which are on the left side are nearer to the blue centroid, whereas all the points which are to the right of the red line are nearer to the green centroid. So assigning the points to the center will look something like this. Now, once again, we are going to move to step three. That is, we are going to recalculate the centroids. So now based on new data points, the blue centroid will be somewhere over here, whereas the green centroid will be somewhere over here. And once again, now we are going to repeat step two, that is assign the data point which is nearest to the centroid to that class. Over here, only this blue dot is going to be assigned to green class, whereas all other data points will remain the same. This dot will also become green. And now we are going to recalculate the centroids once again. A blue centroid might move a bit and green might also move a bit, but that's it. Now, if you are going to do the same thing again, that is repeat step two, there won't be any change. So if there is no change in the position of the centroid, then you will stop the algorithm over there. And now at the end, we have divided all the points automatically into two groups. We have the blue points and we have the green points. So we can name one of them as cluster one and the other one as cluster two. So the only input that we gave was the number of clusters. There are algorithms that can automatically decide that how many clusters should be used to 
efficiently divide the data. But that will be uh, a bit mathematically extensive, so I'm not going to cover that. In other words, we have created a Voronoi diagram in which regions are divided and every class or every cluster is shown by a region. So over here, this blue region or any point which is present in this blue region will correspond to one cluster, whereas any point which is present in this green region will correspond to the other class. I've taken a very simple example where there were only two attributes and there were two classes or two clusters only. But things can get very ugly and very difficult if the number of attributes, that is the features, and the number of clusters grow. That would be much difficult to visualize. For example, for color image segmentation, the data cloud of the image will be in a 3D environment or it will have three axes. For example, if you are using color space of RGB, then one axis will be R, that is red, one would be green and the other one will be blue. And similarly, if you are using hue, saturation and value color space, then one of the axes would be hue, the other one would be saturation and the third one would be value. And all the data points or all the pixels will be somewhere in that 3D space. And you might want to cluster them based on their colors. But let's see one, one such example in MATLAB and see that how MATLAB can achieve this kind of clustering. So I've opened MATLAB and, and to see the output concurrently of whatever we are writing, I'm going to open this uh, live script. So the very first thing is I'm going to read the image and there is one colored image named as colored chips. And it's with an extension of PNG and I'm going to display it as well. So let's see that what this image is. So here it is. This is the image that we want to cluster. You can see that there are some colored chips. There is one black pen and then there is one background of the table. So there are seven regions, five chips, one pen, one background. So there are seven regions. But you will understand this by experience that the background is quite lighter on one side and quite darker on the other side. So when we will start clustering, these two portions might appear as different clusters, but we don't want that. So therefore, it is a nice idea to remove any such discrepancies from the image before you start clustering. So the main objective for this image is to cluster all the color chips. We want to cluster, we want to have red chips separate from the blue chips, from the green chips, from the orange and from the yellow chip. To remove the background, we can use a color thresholder app to see that where the background is and how we can remove it. The color thresholder app can be opened by writing color thresholder or you can go to the apps and start the color thresholder app from there as well. In the color thresholder app, the very first thing is we have to load the image. We already have the image in our workspace named as IMG, so I'm loading it. And then you have to select the color space in which you want to work. Now over here, you should decide one thing. In the HSV domain, you can see that data points are quite separated out. Whereas in other spaces, the data points are quite mingled up. So it would be very easy for us to work in HSV color space instead of RGB or any other color space. So I'm going to choose HSV. The data cloud is shown over here. You can rotate this uh, data cloud to see different angles of it. For example, in this view, uh, I'm seeing the saturation axis, which is going from this point to this. And the circular portion, this axis is of hue axis. Whereas if I rotate it a bit and see the other side, then the value axis would be somewhere in this vertical direction. So if I start removing the pixels in the value axis, then it will remove these black pixels first, and then it will keep on moving upwards until it removes everything. So that would be the value axis. And if I go back to this view, where I have the saturation axis and the hue axis, now I can see that all the chips, which is the red chip points, orange chip points, yellow, green, and blue, they're all lying at higher saturation values and at some hue value. And all the lower saturation values are these ones which correspond to black pen and the table top. So if I can remove the lower saturation values, I can remove the table and the pen without doing anything to the chips. So over here, I'm going to come to the saturation plane and I'm going to remove the lower saturation values. Uh, so I'm going to go up till somewhere 0 0.7475 and that's it. Now you can see that in our image or in the data cloud, the background or the, and the table has been removed. Now on this image, we can perform automatic segmentation to figure out that which color chip is present where. And if you want to use this image, you can export the image from here or you can export the function. But for the time being, I'm going to export the image and from the images, I'm just going to need the masked RGB image. That is this one, which is being shown over here. So I'm going to import that. Now this image will now be present in my workspace. So I can use that image. Now let's implement k-means clustering on the image that we just exported. 
but the image that we exported will be in RGB domain. So we should first convert it into HSV domain because we know that in HSV domain, clustering is much easier because the data points are divided uh, much more than in RGB or in any other color space. So I'm going to create a variable masked HSV image and I'm going to convert the image which I just exported. After that, I have to define that how many clusters I want. I have five chips, one black background. So I have six clusters. So all the pixels will be divided into six clusters. And the k-means algorithm is going to generate a label image. That is, for every pixel, it is going to assign a label that to which cluster that pixel is belonging. So my output of the k-means clustering will have only numbers from one to six. So I'm going to name the variable as label, and then I'm going to use this function that is image segmentation k-means. I have to provide the image in HSV domain in single data type and I have to provide the number of clusters. Now to visualize these labels, I'm going to assign a specific color to every label. The, the output that is the label variable will have either one written over it, two, three, four, or five, or six. There won't be any other label because I have divided every each and every pixel into one of these six clusters. So for that, I'm going to use a color map so that I can assign different colors for different uh, clusters. If you won't use or if you won't specify this color map, MATLAB will by default assign some color, but that would uh, not make any sense because I want the yellow chips to be shown in yellow color only, orange chips to be shown in orange color only, and similarly for the rest. And after that, I'm going to convert the label matrix into labeled image. For that, I can use label to RGB function and pass it the label matrix and the color map that I'm going to use. And now let's view that what we have created. So here is the original one and here is the label image that is the segmented image. So here it is. The second image is the segmented image. Everything that is belonging to table or black pen has been labeled with one color that is a gray color. I've specified this gray color in the uh, color map. All the red chips are represented by red color and you can see the green color I've chosen is this one and blue chips are being represented by blue color, yellow with yellow and orange with orange. If we view the histogram of this label matrix, so there are only six different kind of pixels in the whole image. There are pixels that are labeled one, which are greater than number. These pixels are belonging to the background. Whereas label number two, there are some pixels labeled as three, the other as four, five and six. So from two to six, these are the chips, whereas Label number one has been assigned to the background. Additionally, you can use the image tool function to better visualize that how the label image looks like. In the image tool, you can click on this pixel inspector and it will open a very enlarged view of the same image. Uh, you can expand this portion a bit. And now you can see that our cursor is somewhere over here. So all these pixels are of orange color. They have the same RGB values. And all these pixels are belonging to the background, that is the gray color, they have same pixel values. Similarly, you can move this cursor a bit to see different regions. So all the pixels that are belonging to blue chips have been labeled by blue color, similarly for other portions as well. You can see a bit of errors or noise present that can be removed later on. So dear learners, we have segmented a color image into six different segments or six different clusters using k-means clustering in MATLAB. If you have any queries, you can always reach to me through YouTube comments or my email address. Thank you and take care.